Welcome, friends. My name is Brian Benson, founder of InspireLink, and today we have Stephanie Mansour with us. We are super excited. She is like the most bubbly, fun person like I've ever met, so it's awesome. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Thanks, Brian. Yeah, so Stephanie does like weight loss, and she's a life lifestyle coach for women, and uh, she's just done some amazing things. She's transformed lives, and she's just crushing it, and we're here to get her story, so awesome. I'm happy to be here today. <laughs> so why don't you kind of go through your journey, kind of tell us how you got to where you are today and uh, how you got into this kind of line of work. Yeah, so I've always been really passionate about creating positive um, pro-social messages in the media uh, for women specifically because growing up I always felt like women were told to be a certain size or look a certain way or do this to get the job or the promotion or the guy and really um, you know do certain things or buy certain products to feel more confident and to feel happy with themselves so I uh, wanted to make it my mission to create something more positive so that women were able to take control over how they felt about themselves and not go to all these external things for validation or feeling like they're successful. So growing up, I was a tomboy and I was really healthy and really fit. But then when I got to college, I gained, you know, the freshman 15 times <laughs> almost two. And um, <laughs> I was really disconnected with my body and, and disconnected with myself. And I felt really bad about myself. Um, so I was on some prescription medications for anxiety and sleep and migraines and trying really hard to lose weight. Um, and it wasn't until I started focusing on self-acceptance, yoga, breathing, meditation, and really valuing my body that I started to feel better and look better, you know, to myself, what I saw in the mirror, I, I was starting to like, and, um, just have more confidence. So I always knew I wanted to go into television. Um, I did not know I was going to become an entrepreneur, but um, <laughs> I worked in TV for a couple of years and then I decided, you know what, in order for me to get my message out there, I need to start my own brand and essentially start my own business. So that's how I started to step it up with Steph almost eight years ago. Wow, that's awesome. I mean, I love that you kind of had a passion. F I mean, you had a passion for it and, and you... Uh, went through some experiences that sort of really drove you to where you were, are today. So that's yeah. that's fantastic. So um, I want to kind of get into like the niche of it now. So you decided to you know get into the, um, helping women. You know, mm -hmm. not just like a, a bigger, broader thing. And I have a firm belief that the you know the riches are in the niches or niches yeah. and riches. So um, you know what's what's been beneficial for you in in niching down like that and and can you kind of tell me how you um you know you got really got into that niche yeah sure that's a great question so just for a little background so my bachelor's degree is from michigan in um, communications with an emphasis on women's studies and psychology and i was always more interested in, in women's issues than men issue male issues because <laughs> number one i can relate better and number two i just feel like you know women are a little more complex and emotional Whereas men, you know, if they want to lose 10 pounds, they're just going to go out and do it. You know, they're going to not eat or they're going to work out really hard and that's it. Yeah. Women, it's more, you know, there's there's um, like the family or the career or, you know, prioritizing themselves. And there's a lot more emotional stuff that goes into it. So when I um, got my certifications in personal training, yoga, Pilates, and life coaching, I decided that, okay, I don't even know how to start a business. I'm going to create blue flyers for men and pink flyers for women and I'm going to post them in the grocery store and like go all over to these weird places just to try to get clients. So I was struggling um, for the first few years in my business and it wasn't until I started getting really specific on who I wanted to work with, like my ideal clients, that I started attracting those women that not only wanted the physical transformation but also wanted the lifestyle and the mindset and the confidence transformation as well. So my advice would be to you know focus on what it is that you are most passionate about and who you're most passionate about working with um, and then really hone in there and you know the riches are in the niches mm. what you were saying <laughs> so that's when I was really able to up level my programs and um, you know increase my revenue and also feel like I was really offering this comprehensive program instead of you know spreading my energy with you know the, the 20 year old man the 60 year old man the 40 year old woman you know so I, I wasn't I wasn't as all over the place. So that really helped me with my business. 
Ah, uh, that's interesting. And I like how you, at first, like, I mean, you studied that, but it was cool that you kind of even just had to t test it out, you know? Yeah. And you put the blue flyers and the pink flyers and tried to right. understand, like, okay, you know, but I love that. I think that's really interesting. I think that that's good advice for anybody who, you know, is going out there and, and starting a business is find out, you know, who you want to work with and who you're most passionate about. So I love that. So let's talk about the struggles now. Like what struggles, you know, came across and, uh, you know, what have you learned from them? Yeah, so that was a really big one, you know, Brian, when I was trying to think, okay, I just need to, like, pay my rent, so I'll take anyone who wants to work with me, you know. Um, so getting out of that, like, survivor mentality was really big um, and focusing on, like, getting clear and being in control of myself and, and trusting that, okay, I'm on purpose, this is my mission, so I'm not going to just flounder and become a homeless person. I'm going to find a way to, you know, make my rent. So, mm -hmm. um, so once I started getting out of that mentality, I started studying more like uh, business books because, you know, my background was not in business um, and like wealth consciousness books even um, just to try to elevate me so I wasn't in that survivor mentality. Um, that helped me get out of out of the struggle of the niche situation. Mm -hmm. um, and another thing that I've struggled with, and, and I still do to this day, is you know, I'm the main decision maker. So it's whatever I say goes, and my energy is my biggest asset. So if I'm distracted or if I'm doing things that I don't like, it's just draining my energy. But sometimes these opportunities seem so enticing that you know you're like, okay, I'm going to do that. So I did. Um, I did a, uh, a service, uh, like a charity organization, um, a couple of them actually, because I thought, okay, this will help me get my name out there mm -hmm. and whatever, and they were big time sucks. <laughs> it was good that I was helping, but I had to follow, you know, like the, the outline of the, of the charity and the structure, and it was just, I was spending a lot of time and hours doing stuff that wasn't actually impacting people, mm -hmm. just kind of creating content, and that's not where my passion lies. My passion lies in, you know, helping people one-on-one, -on -one, and also on TV where I can touch hundreds of people. So I know it's a long-winded response. I mean, I go on and on about my struggles and mistakes. Um, <laughs> no, as entrepreneurs, we know. We know what it's right, like. Right. We all have the. We, it, it's just part of the learning experience, right? right. It helps you become yeah. better. And what I want to ask you is, and just kind of a follow-up to that, is, is you talked about how you like got a bunch of business books and stuff. You know, what would you tell the person who, you know, isn't doesn't have a business degree or business background but needs to learn it like you did? You know, you knew all about yeah. the health industry and, and lifestyle industry and, uh, you know, what would you advise somebody on that and, and how to learn the business? Because maybe people won't start businesses because they're nervous or they're like, oh, I don't know anything about it. Right. Yeah, that's a great question. I think the first step is just to be clear, you know, like I was saying before, on what you are interested in and what you think you're best at. And then from there, you know, I actually, aside from business books, I would Google, you know, success coach or health and wellness coach. And I would go because I did want to build an online business eventually, which I now have, but I would study how they were doing it. So I would get on their email list. I would get into their newsletters. I'd get into their, you know, quote unquote sales funnels and see how they were doing it and see what type of things they were putting in their newsletters. And so that really helped me with the business side, honing in on how I should position my content and my message. Mm -hmm. Because you know, you're passionate about what you're doing, but it doesn't necessarily mean that you're like selling or reaching the masses or having a great impact. So you do have to have the business side of it. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, if you, a business makes money, so you have to figure right. out how you're going to get clients. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> so you do a ton of video, like ton of Facebook live. I mean, you're on TV, you do, you know, you're always there. You had a PR background and you know, I've heard like 80% of content will be video in the next five years, like online. So, um, you know, from your background, you know, what would you tell an aspiring entrepreneur with the idea about, you know, video marketing? since you're really yeah. good at it. Oh, thank you. Well, I love um, the video because I feel like it's a way for you to really like jump through into someone's living room or, you know, if you're, they're on their phone in bed, like you're in bed with them, you know, <laughs> it, can be, it can be a little more intimate, you know, than just text, you know, typing stuff. Um, right. So I think just allowing yourself to like be natural and like enjoy and, and think that you're like, you know, sitting there with someone and having a conversation. Um, that's something if you're nervous, you know, that can help you kind of get over that a little bit. 
but also um, something that, you know, I pump out a lot of content and videos, but I need to focus on, you know, tagging the videos. So mm -hmm. using the keywords that people are searching for when they're looking for you or in the descriptions, you know, writing out explicitly, like, what are you talking about? And even repeating it a couple times when you're, when you're tagging these videos so that more people can see them. So, um, you know, I've had people tell me I should, I should make one video a day for my, for my website. But, you know, it takes a while to get all those keywords correct and write the text so that people actually view the videos. Right. So that's an example of something I had struggled with, too, going back to your previous question, is, you know, do I listen to this? Because this would work, you know, theoretically, but right now that's too much for me to do. You know, not only just one video a day, but also writing it so that people are able to find it. Right, right. Yeah, I mean, it is a ton of work. And I've been told the same thing. I mean, I would love yeah. to put up a daily video blog, but it's right now it seems a, it yeah. seems a lot. So right, but I right. think we'll get there. Yeah. <laughs> but let me ask you something like you have such an outgoing personality, you're super fun, like, you know, there's a lot of introverts and, and other people that maybe need to get in that video marketing space, you know, what would you tell them to like, you know, what makes a super com a compelling video and like, how would you tell them to say, look, this is something you need to do. Like, here's yeah. how you can start doing it. Mm -hmm. I would say starting with like a 60 second quick tip. So that's like a, that's kind of, I mean, I guess it's long compared to other, you know, videos on Instagram or whatever, but if you don't have editors, if you don't want to slice and dice a video, if you don't want to put cool effects in, just start with a 60 second, you know, staring at the camera, giving tips or even, even 30 sec a 30 second tip. It doesn't need to be long winded. And I know even for myself, I can be a little wordy sometimes. So if you just kind of have, you know, like three bullet points, like these are the three things I want to say and it's 30 seconds or 60 seconds, that's a really, you know, good, easy way to get started. And, you know, you can retake it 20 times at that point because then, you know, if it's 60 seconds, it would only be 20 minutes out of your day that you're trying to get this video. So um, I would say to always announce, you know, who you are mm -hmm. um, and what it is that you do, um, usually at the beginning of the video, and then give your few, you know, little tips or the one tip of the day, and then at the end, just tell them where to go for more information. And I always slap up a, you know, www.stepitupwithstep.com at the end of my videos, um, just so people then have a visual to go to as well. Right, and when and doing video, um, I I love that answer, and I think that's really smart. I just dropped my pen. Um, <laughs> I got another one here. So um, I'm blowing your mind. You can't even hold your writing. <laughs> I know. I'm like, so. Um, how are you using the social platforms of the video on how people behave differently? Because people look at Instagram, because we kind of had this conversation about like yeah. the Instagram and the Snapchat and the YouTube and Facebook. You know, what are you doing differently on those types of platforms yeah. that are helping you? That's a good question. So I actually have some, um, I have a few interns who are, you know, 20, 20 year old um college students and they're like what about snapchat what about snapchat and i'm like i can't do anything else right now so i'm not on snapchat because um you know those are little quick videos and um it's i don't really see what it would do right now for us and i would rather focus on the platforms that we already kind of have established mm -hmm. and and make those better so Facebook, um, I really like because I feel like a lot of my um, clientele or followers, like ideal followers are there. So I work with women usually ages like 30 to 60 and they're, um, you know, successful in most areas of their lives, but they just are struggling to lose weight or, you know, get the body and, and be as healthy as they want to be. Um, so those, those women are, I've been finding a lot on, on Facebook mm -hmm. as opposed to Instagram, which is a little more of a younger crowd. And that's what I was talking about. Those quick little videos, you know, people aren't going to sit there and watch you talking to the camera right. for 30 to 60 seconds straight, but on Facebook, they may for two to three minutes straight. So, um, I think just figuring out, you know, who's your niche and we tried doing, um, like a free 21 day challenge and we were doing, you know, like a, an online challenge. And we had a lot of participation on Instagram and it was more public, whereas on Facebook, people are a little bit more private and only wanting to post in the private group. But Instagram, they were wanting to post you know, on their page because it's all public mm -hmm. and then tag us and talk about the challenge. So I just really think Instagram's a little more um, like out there and in your face and maybe the younger demographic, whereas Facebook has like the more adults. 
Right. And what's your like, uh, you know, a, a, a length of video you would put on like a Facebook? Like, like... Yeah, we have these uh, new webisodes that just started coming out and they are between two and a half and um, one of them I think is three and a half minutes. But they're oh. around there. But those are edited a little bit. Mm -hmm. So they're not just me at the camera. It's like me interviewing someone kind of like this, except like I'm next to them with the mic. Um, so they, they, so there's a couple different angles sometimes, you know, and we, we put in a little bit of B roll in there. So it was a little, like keeps your attention a little bit longer, but I have seen, I mean, I've watched videos of, of the success coaches and other health and fitness experts. Cause I'm trying to learn from them too. Um, that are five minutes, right. you know, cause I'm just really interested in the content. So, so it just kind of depends on, on probably your demographic. It depends yeah. on, you know, how quick you can get your message out there. But also, like like you said, if it's really interesting content that you know your audience is going to be into, maybe a little bit right. longer. But if you're just trying to hit some points home, it's just maybe like a two to three and a half minute. Yeah. Exactly. Cool. Great advice. Great advice. So I love this question because I, well, I love entrepreneurs and I think that each one of them has a different, you know, skill set and, and, and way to get to where they are. But what are some core skills you feel that every entrepreneur needs to be successful? Um, well, one of them would be determination. So holding strong to your vision and your purpose and just being determined to make it be a success. Mm -hmm. So um, there's this quote that I've been using this year and that I say to myself every morning and it's, it's already done. So believing that what you're envisioning or what you're wanting to do and put out there as an entrepreneur is already done. So that's like a success mindset, I guess you would say. Um, so just believing and having faith and, and being determined to see it through um, is one um, is one trait. And the second trait I would say is organization. So I think at least for myself and other entrepreneurs, I know we're very creative and kind of like out there. Not that we can't have like straightforward conversations, but in the <laughs> class a little bit more. <laughs> yeah. Whereas, you know, what's really helped me is, you know, I'm not writing my newsletters the day before. Mm -hmm. I'm not, you know, just like, oh, randomly posting on social media all the time. I have a schedule. I got organized. I put a plan together. And on Mondays, I'm doing this. On Tuesdays, I'm doing this. Wednesdays, this. So that way I have a list of stuff that's organized. And I can still be creative with my content. But at least I'm not scrambling at the last minute or not in the mood at the last minute you know, I, I really have more structure. So I would say determination and organization. So what would, what do you, is, how was that, how did you create that calendar, that content calendar? Is that just like on your Google calendar where you blocked off times? Do you actually, you know, what does that look like and how did you build that? Yeah, so I actually, I'll show you, I'm in my office right now. So I have these, um, I have these index cards. Oh, so there you go. Every, every new thing that I need to do is on an index card. And then I also have this, I'll like empty this out a little bit, but I have this like filing thing. So it's like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So in Love each it. day, you can see it's like a little more empty because it is towards the end of the week. But <laughs> like on Monday, I write on like for the, on Friday, I'll plan for the week before. So I'll write on, on this index card, you know, schedule social media and I'll put that in the Monday slot. And then on Tuesday, I'll put, you know, write the newsletter and I'll put that in the Tuesday slot. So, um, that's actually, I can't remember where I learned the, the index card technique, but if you put a new thought or new um, thing that you need to do on, on a fresh index card, and then on the back if there are any details, um, and then I just came up with this slot system <laughs> so that I had my days organized. So, so do you do that on like a sun? Do you do that on like Sunday and plan your whole week? Do you do it yeah, at night? Yeah, I do it on Fridays. Okay, and then I, and then I plan the whole week. But some stuff like I like I, I usually would have just social media planning, and that's the same one, and that would just like stay in Monday, and then I would take it out once I've done it, and then just put it back on Friday for the following Monday and do Tuesday. You know, so I think Friday what the plan is for the following week, but well, some stuff is just set every week. So what's the point of taking it out? Is that just like, okay, I, I've done it. I'm, visual. A visual. I'm very visual. Yeah. If I see that there's something still left in my slot, I'm like, oh my God, what am I doing? <laughs> I love it. No, I love the organization. I think that that is so key for, for any yeah. entrepreneur. So I love that. So what advice could you give to a college student from your experiences? 
Well, when I was in college, I interned a lot. Um, so I took a lot of internships that were unpaid, and they were things that I was passionate about. So I was a senior in college, and all my friends were going out, you know, Thirsty Thursdays. And I was driving, I was at Michigan, and I was driving an hour and a half north to Saginaw, Michigan, in the, you know, in blizzards on Thursdays and sometimes Fridays for over 12 hour days just so I could shadow their, their news. So I would shadow their five o'clock and six o'clock news, and then I would stay for the 10 or 11 o'clock news, and then I would come home. And all my friends were like out partying, and I was, you know, doing my, doing my internship because I wanted to learn it. Um, same thing, you know, I would drive to Detroit and do I did an internship with um, Oprah's radio station for one of her, um, one of the hosts of her shows, and she was based, you know, right outside of Detroit, so I would drive there and do, do that stuff. Um, I mean, I, was, I moved to New York and worked at PBS, um, you know, the public broadcasting there in New York, and it was unpaid, and it was, it was during college, so my parents were still helping me out a little bit. But, you know, I'd go to Starbucks with my roommate at the end of the night and see if they were going to throw away any sandwiches so that I could have those for lunch the next day. Um, so, you know, just really like having that kind of hustle mentality when it comes to the internships. And I know a lot of them are paid now, but if you're offering to do something because you're just into it and passionate, that's going to lead to more stuff in the future. So little tidbit, that Michigan station, I now tape weekly um, segments for them. So I'm on mm -hmm. air every week doing something for them. So... And that's, that's you know, right. 10 years later. <laughs> that's awesome. So, but let me ask you, because I did not have that discipline in college at all. <laughs> how do you, how do you, you know, how do you not go to the, <laughs> this, I sound like bad, like I'm this party. No, I, it's okay. You know, how did, but, but I mean, I see, but I, I like, if I knew what I know now, I would have totally been different in college, I think. Yeah. But, uh, but how did you, you know, how did you stay so disciplined at a young age? I mean, you're in this new college atmosphere. Obviously, Michigan, awesome. Like, yeah. you, party school, like, fun. Like, yeah. like, how did you stay so focused? Well, I always knew I had, like, football Saturdays. <laughs> <laughs> That's, like, my party days. Um, and, you know, there's other days of the week, too. But I, I just always wanted to put my, you know, what I wanted to do with my life outside of college and after college. I wanted to put that first. So, because that's just like, you know, who I was at the time. And I didn't start getting internships until like a junior, I was a junior and a senior. Um, so freshman and sophomore year, I, I was out doing, you know, having more, I guess, fun, you would say, um, typical college stuff. Um, but I always wanted to do something more after college. So that's kind of, that was like a carrot hanging in front of me that was getting me to go to Saginaw on Thursday and Fridays right. instead of out with my friends. No, I love it. I think that that's great. So what's next for Step It Up with Steph? And, uh, you know, um, how can we connect with you? Yeah. So if you want, actually, we have a brand new um, 10 ways that successful women um, at, at work sabotage themselves with those successful habits when it comes to weight loss. So um, we have that new download. That's at stepitupwithsteph.com. So that's the website. Okay. And then Twitter is Step It Up W Steph. And Instagram, Facebook is all step it up with Steph. Um, so you can find me on social media and, and talk to me if you want. Um, and I'll respond. Um, and then as far as moving forward, um, so I have my private weight loss clients. And um, I used to do a lot of in-home training and personal training and stuff. But now oh, we, have, um, we have the workout DVD. There you go. So we have the workout DVD. So um, most of my clients are um, private weight loss clients, and I don't actually train them anymore with the workouts. So I work with clients um, all over the country, and then they just follow the workout DVD. Um, and then I also have them um, do sessions with the doctor of naturopathy, who's like the doctor of nutrition. So she analyzes their metabolism, their blood levels, their blood work, um, any hormonal issues, and gives them feedback. And then we also feature her in our weekly newsletter for Step It Up With Steph. So you can go to the website and sign up for that, and you'll get that in your, um, in your inbox. And so aside from all my work with my clients and online, we have, um, we're working on um, the ultimate goal is a television show. So we are in, in the works. I'll leave you. You can follow me if you want. You know, you know. Follow her. You have to. Yeah. Follow me. Follow me. Um, so... So that's what um, that you know. I am the prize. That's always been the goal. So, um, so we're we're working on that right now. 
Wonderful. Well, I mean, it sounds like you have so many amazing things going on and and you're so positive and I just I just love all the advice and things that you just told us today is so, you know, I mean, you know, you're so inspiring and I think it's just wonderful. I think you're doing great things and uh, I wish you the best of luck. So thank you for your time. I mean, with everything going on, I'm just glad I got this half hour with you. So <laughs> <laughs> thank you well, so thanks much. Thanks for being patient with me for scheduling this, Brian. Uh, <laughs> all good. I'm very grateful. So thank you so much. Yes, thank you.